Hi, my name is Kevin Danaher, co-founder of Global Exchange and the Green Festivals, and I'm here in Nevada City at the former Nevada City Airport. It's a hundred-acre site that the city recently put out a proposal for what to do with it. So I'm working with Michael DiMartino of Golden Road Radio Show and the Alliance for Resilient Communities, building a network of resilience organizations here in northeastern California. This site of a hundred acres, which is empty, as you can see, is now up for grabs in terms of what is it going to become. So we're trying to bring together a lot of diverse people and organizations to say, look, this could be a platform where we bring together the permaculture people, the artists, the youth groups, the environmental groups, CAL FIRE. We've got some serious issues confronting us in California in terms of how do we manage our forests and how do we more generally manage our land. So one of the things we could do here is the city could give a dollar a year lease to a coalition of groups to develop this property as a showcase for those technologies that are already in existence but that are going to be the dominant technologies of the future. Renewable energy, green building, water conservation and purification, organic agriculture, hemp, the farm bill that's coming through Congress makes hemp legal nationally. So that's a massive potential generator of income and jobs and housing because there are people now who know how to do small houses there could be a facility here on 100 acres. You've got plenty of room for setting up a manufacturing facility. It could be solar powered, a big solar farm. We know how to do all of that. And the time is right because the economic system is going to crash and the environment is crashing. Every biological system on the face of this earth is in a state of rapid decline, if not collapse. The economy is also going to crash because you can't have an economic model that continues to say grow, grow, grow in a finite planet with finite resources. That just doesn't work. Everything is running out. So we have to switch to a balanced approach to the economy of how are we going to pass on this planet to future generations so they don't curse us for having screwed everything up. And there, so there's two things going on. One is the system that is, is getting worse. The system that could be keeps getting better. Wind energy, solar energy, the prices are coming down, etc. If we get people to understand, you don't need to live in the world that is. You can live in this world that is becoming, that unleashes a lot of spiritual and political energy. And we can build a movement starting with this location right here. So ideally, what would be some of the projects that could be happening up here, both for uh, environmental education, community education, uh, uh, economic development, and also to, to provide solutions for some of the problems that are happening? What are some things that could be going on here? One of the things I would suggest as an initial thing is to bring a whole bunch of permaculture people here. Permaculture is a design science that says, let's figure out how we can live in harmony with nature and do biomimicry. Look at how nature recycles water. See how nature grows trees and sequesters carbon. A tree, we're never gonna invent something better than a tree in terms of sequestering carbon, storing water. People don't realize when you're out in the forest, the trees put out pheromones that lower your blood pressure. The, the Japanese do a thing called forest bathing. So we could educate all sorts of people, integrate it with the schools, bring the kids out, have them learn forestry, have them learn firefighting technology. How do you make a forest safe for, for fire by removing low fuel? All sorts of activities like that, both educational but also productive enterprise. Things like rustic furniture. You're gonna be cutting down some trees and cutting wood. 
Okay, let's build stuff out of it. Let's build t uh, tiny houses. There's people in the Bay Area who know how to do that. They can come up and do workshops, cob building workshops, all sorts of trainings that people will pay to get that training and then you've got something left behind, a structure left behind. So I would see this property as a platform for building unity. Fingers are breakable when they're like this, when they're like this, when they're united, they're unbreakable. The motto of the United States is E Pluribus Unum, from many, one. And that spirit of building unity across political, religious, racial, gender barriers bring people together and create a platform for helping us accelerate into the next economy, the green economy. And, and as opposed to just being a concerned citizen, just tell people who might be watching this a little bit about your background and uh, how you've been involved with Green Festival and also TED Talks and just uh, let people know a little more about yourself and uh, so they can understand that you have a, a world of experience and background and, and you see the potential with this property. Well, my mama told me never, never say things about yourself. Self-praise is no praise, as she used to say. But yeah, I got a PhD at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Thank you very much, banana slugs, go slugs. And uh, yeah, uh, Global Exchange, we started Global Exchange in 1988. It's still in existence 30 years later, human rights organization, educating the American people about what's going on in the world and why US policy in most places sucks. And the Green Festivals, we started in 2002 as a reaction to what happened in 2001 with the towers yeah, crashing and all this kind of stuff. And I said, we got to do something positive. We can't just be against the empire. We got to show people there's a green economy. And the green economy movement has taken off like a rocket. If you look at the data on solar energy, wind energy, green building, all these efficiencies, it's growing faster than the general economy. So that's going to be the future, especially as biological systems break down. People don't realize when all the ice on this planet melts, which it is doing, it raises ocean levels over 200 feet. It's the elbow on the Statue of Liberty. That's going to create massive migration to places like this that are lightly populated. So it's up to us who live here in Northern California to figure out ways that we can educate people about how do we transition to a totally renewable, totally sustainable, circular economy that doesn't extract from nature, but helps nature be even more productive than it is. Great, thank you. And lastly, any uh, words of wisdom you'd like to let leave people with? Because, you know, people who might be watching this might be uh, living in, in, in a house somewhere in middle America. They might have a, a very busy life, children, families, or be taking care of a, a senior parent or something. What can people do practically just in their own house, in their own home to help, um, you know, protect the environment and also to live a healthier lifestyle? Well, one of the things you can do is if you go on YouTube and you put in my name, Kevin Danaher, K-E-V-I-N-D-A-N-A-H-E-R, You'll see a whole bunch of lectures I've done and interviews I've done and stuff like that. And what it comes down to, I think, is we're in the process of redefining what love means. Not the little love in a Hollywood movie of two people, a little island of happiness in a sea of misery, but big love. Nobody left out. It's what all the great spiritual leaders, Jesus and Buddha and Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King, all these great spiritual leaders had the same message, love. Love is the answer to all questions. Unconditional love. Reaching out to our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate. Reaching out to Mother Nature and instead of destroying her with this extractive economic model, but being generous of spirit. And it turns out that when you're generous of spirit and you're kind to other living things, it improves your physical health. So we're seeing science and spirituality coming together. The golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated, exists in almost every culture in the world. And now what we're doing is we're unpacking that word others to mean all living things. Treat other living things the way you want to be treated. Great rule to live by. 
Well, thank you so much for your time. And I know you're uh, undertaking a similar type of a resilience project up in uh, Plumas County at your place. So again, thank you for your time and for coming up here to Nevada County to help uh, raise more awareness about the potential of this spot for us. And we look forward to collaborating in the very near future more. My pleasure. Thank you.